Hello and welcome to Melbourne 22. I'm Aaron McCarthy. And I'm Kate Garrard. Hold on, cut, cut, stop, sorry, go. Uh, what, who are you? I'm Kate Garrard, I just said Where's that. Anna? So... You're not Anna. No, no I'm you're not really Anna. not. <laughs> no. So uh, I guess, uh, ladies and gentlemen, our beloved Anna will be away for a few episodes throughout the season, by the looks of it, and this this here is the, the result of that. Kate, supposedly. <laughs> uh, maybe she'll stick around, who knows? You won't, though. Um, Right, thank you, Aaron. Thanks for making me feel well, really warm and we welcome didn't, to the show. We didn't yep. discuss this, so. All right. All right. Well, we will see how long I stay around. Mm. Anyway, tonight, let's explore. We're going to explore Melbourne's theatre scene. Yeah, we learn about another Melbourne made marvel. And we also get some healthy eating tips and talk about the upcoming Melbourne Marathon. Well done, Kate. Uh, that's just a Pass sample the test. of what's coming up tonight on Melbourne 22. See, Kate, this is the part where we. <laughs> In all seriousness though, Kate, welcome to Melbourne 22. It's good to have you along. Thank you. It's really good to be here. All right. <laughs> so uh, first up tonight, we delve into the world of theatre. Yeah, it's something that's been around for centuries, but are ticket sales hurting the industry? I think that Melbourne's the theatrical capital of Australia. I think that we've got a real cultural heritage here. Uh, and a lot of theatre has been developed in Melbourne and a lot of theatrical styles and an Australian voice has come out of Melbourne. I think for artists, Melbourne is a good market because we have a lot of diversity in the types of theatre being presented, everything from kind of the mega plex arena spectacular right down to the, the garages of Northcote. And I think in the same way, if you're looking at it at a financial perspective, passion for theatre and, and the activity of theatre breed more audience engagement. In some large scale work, Melbourne is the first point of call because they're testing ideas and experimenting with an audience in a smaller market. Theatre just has something quite magical about it in that, you know, once you get in front of a live audience, something something lifts, you know, and particularly for young young actors. Because it's live, because it's risky, but most of the time it's because of the artists working in, in those ways and, and I think what's great about the performing arts is that they're ephemeral. They uh, disappear as soon as they happen and they're very, very delicate. They need to be maintained every night. You're never going to see the same performance twice. You are constantly on your toes. You never know what's going to happen. And I think seeing live bodies in space performing to you and engaging in interesting ideas and interesting ways live for you is a very unique and special experience. There is a, a bit of a dying audience and theatre by its nature can be quite exclusive, um, can be expensive ticket prices and you know limited seasons and that type of thing. I think the best way uh, for people to support the theatre is to buy a ticket and to go along and see shows. It's kind of a no-brainer, but in fact, uh, if you're interested in theatre and you want to know what's on stages and you want to know what people are talking about, the best way to find out is to go and to support artists. I think it's important for us that young people particularly come and see shows. As a result of a young cast, we get young audiences coming to support their peers. And that has such a great knock-on effect. I think as long as companies embark on telling stories that are meaningful, then audiences hopefully will come. Theatre will always find a way to survive. It's been around for millennia. As communities of human beings, theatre has been part of our fabric. It will survive by hook or by crook. Well, it's great to hear that theatre is still alive and kicking in Melbourne. And here to discuss it further, we're joined by actor and director Jolian James. Welcome to the show, Joel. Hi, welcome, thank you. Joel, thanks for coming along. Now, what is your take uh, on the health of the, uh, of the Australian theatre scene at the moment? How's it going? Oh, look, I think as actors we're inherently whingers about money and <laughs> uh, everything. But I'd have to say that Melbourne particularly, I'm just, I've just been involved in a tour which has been all around Australia. And Melbourne seems to be a place that does actually really embrace um, theatre and new theatre and really interesting works at the moment. It's a great place to be. 
And you've been in a lot of different productions over the years, like Shame on the Musical, and you've been on Offspring, and Rush, and a whole lot of things in theatre and film. Yeah. What are you working on at the moment, or what have you got coming up next? Um, I'm working with, well, this is a perfect discussion actually, I'm working with a Hayloft production, uh, a Hay Hayloft uh, project, which are a Melbourne based company that really grew out of the need for some really exciting young fresh ideas. They've done incredible stuff here and now overseas as well. And um, it's a, a show called Delectable Shelter, which is this kind of screwball comedy, crazy, crazy piece. Um, but Sounds yeah, fun. it's great. It's very funny. <laughs> now, Joel, you've got a pretty impressive CV as far as all of the acting that you've done. But I told you're... you it's because I'm really old. <laughs> well, you, you obviously uh, live by the beach. The salt air doesn't. <laughs> <you>? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but you are a director as well. What sort yeah. of uh, things have you been involved in directing lately? Oh, uh, lots of stuff. Um, you, look, you've got to be pragmatic as an actor in this industry. It's a very small industry, so as many skills as you have um, are always useful. Uh, I'm also a photographer, so um, we create ads and, and photography and fashion shoots. We recently did uh, Kate Sobrano's latest video clip, which we directed and wrote and produced ourselves. I, I work with um, uh, my partner, Raphael Ruse, who's my business partner. So um, that most recently is what we have been working on. That's cool. Lots of different things that yeah. keep you busy. So what, what advice can you give someone who wants to start out as an actor? Because it sometimes can be a, a challenging path to yeah, tread. don't um, do it. <laughs> no, I love this if you want an money, anecdote. Be a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a friend who has two little girls, and he said he's ready for the day that his little girls come up and say, "Daddy, I, w I want to be an actor." And he'll say, "That's not how you pronounce it. It's pronounced doctor." <laughs> so, um, Perfect. oh, look, you know, you know, follow your dreams always, but it's a hard slog. It's not kind of the romantic image of you know, young, beautiful people that you get on all your soaps and stuff. It's a really hard slog and it's very rewarding and I've had a lovely career and I've been very fortunate to do incredible things. But, you know, it's, a, it's an art form that gets better as you get older and you need to hone it and, and really work on it all the time. Looking at the scene long term, how are we going to stop all of our great talent going overseas? I don't know. I think there's part of an Australian kind of, I think the, the cultural cringe is still alive and well. We don't really recognise our talent until they succeed over, overseas. Mm. I think it's something that's always happened and will probably continue to happen. And I think it's great. We are a global market now and it's fantastic seeing so many Aussie actors on big budget films and stuff like that. So I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming in and talking to us You're about welcome. that. Well, now it's time to spend 60 seconds with a guide dog instructor. Let's roll the tape. Hi, I'm Ron Hill. Uh, I'm a guide dog trainer with Guide Dog Victoria. I've been here for about three years training guide dogs. Like everyone else, I've always loved dogs. When the opportunity came up to actually be working with dogs all day, every day, uh, I jumped at that opportunity. We have to become certified or qualified as a dog trainer. Initially, I did 12 months with a senior guide dog instructor who did the practical aspect and then it was also the theory aspect of there's a lot of quality control checks that we had to go through. And eventually, after about 14 months, I became qualified as a guide dog trainer. Most people that see you out in the street are envious and say, oh, it must be fun to you know work with dogs all day. They give you so much more than than you give them basically and just to have that love and affection when you come to work every morning and get a nice big sloppy kiss, nothing better. Coming up next, dietitian Rachel Jeffrey tells us all we need to know about healthy eating. And we talk to Tim Crosby in the studio about the upcoming Melbourne Marathon.